This is the voice of the Report of the Week, signing on. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone listening. This is VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week. And we're here, welcome, greetings, greetings. Here we are, another show, another fun show. Hope all so, hope all is going well. I was thinking, you know, I'll oftentimes worry and fret and kind of scratch my head and say, you know, oh shoot, what do I need to talk about now? Because I want to make the show longer, you know? Gotta be two hours. Gotta be two hours long, I think, to myself. And sometimes that that serves as something very off-putting about recording these. If you don't have enough to, to talk about that'll make this show last two hours long, or longer, then don't even bother, I would sometimes think. But today I came to the realization, you know? Go ahead, explain explain to me who's forcing you to make these programs two hours long. But, you know, no one. No one's putting a gun to my head and telling me, go pick up the microphone and do a VORW for two hours. Only person that's making me feel this way is myself. I figure, well, all right, fine. If I do a show that's just an hour and a half, or one hour, or an hour and 59 minutes, most people aren't going to complain. And those who do are just greedy. You know, ignore them. So then I thought to myself, yeah, well, forget about those people. I'll pick up the microphone and I'll start talking and... I talk for as long as I talk, and that's going to be that. You see, sometimes our mind puts us in these idiotic little traps. I know mine does sometimes, and sometimes it gets the best of us, but... Sometimes it takes a while to see through it and and see the situation really for what it is. You know, oftentimes, as I said, I'll fret and worry about these programs not being long enough, and... Um, as a result, it'll lower the quality, especially of the first, you know, 30 or 40 minutes of the program. All because I just want this show to be two hours long, at the same time sacrificing the quality of the show just to get that feat, you know. So I figure, forget it, you know. It's if, 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 if it ends up being two hours, it'll be two hours. If it'll be an hour and 40 minutes, it'll be an hour and 40 minutes. And if I talk for a really long time and it's three hours, then it'll be three hours. So no more BS trying to make the show longer for no other reason. Something that's completely unnecessary. It'll be as long as it is, and that's that. Surprised it took me long enough to get that in my head. I mean, it's something self-explanatory that I knew, but I couldn't really agree with that idea until today. Well, I hope you're all doing well. I hope all is going well. Happy spring. First day of spring. Hope the snow finally melts where you are, if there is any. I, you know, I, I really, I say this in every show, but I, I hate the snow. So when it, when it melts away, it'll be a nice smile on my face. <sighs> Boy, snow is and another reason why I why I, I'm not in a, a snow snow ridden area anymore um, it, the winter can be fun but the cold temperatures are just too much for me to handle I can't do it I'd rather I'd rather deal with the Florida summers than the the winters I would go outside and sweat a bit that's fine 
instead of going outside staying out too long and you lose two of your toes from the frostbite so I'll deal with it I will I'll deal with it I have some things to talk about not a ton uh, but a few things here and there and of course I have uh, all matters radio radio to discuss and a few channel related things and then we'll read some letters that will then lead us into some free form discussion so I hope you'll be able to stay tuned for all that this is VORW the voice of the report of the week and let's make sure this recorder is on now good it says it's recording so that's good okay well, first and foremost, in terms of the channel, thankfully, statistics-wise, the subscribers are up, uh, which is good. Uh, you might remember a few months ago I said it's like the stock market, you know? Ignore it from month to month, and that's true now. i got to ignore this, too, but you got to look at the long-term trends as a whole and uh, go from there. But short-term, at least, it's looking good. At least the subscribers are up. It was... Originally around 100 a day, and now it's between 250 and 300 a day, so that's nice to see. Um, that it's back, back in business, I guess. It's very weird how it is. I think it's YouTube messing with the... I, I'm, I, I used to dismiss that. I used to say it's not the case, but I'm getting more and more convinced that it is just YouTube that controls everything um, in terms of how much attention a channel gets. I'm... I'm very convinced by that because in January I wasn't doing anything different with the channel. Videos are exactly the same as they are now, filmed in the car. Um, some outside, a few random videos and a few VRWs here and there and that's it. And the channel was getting slow and I didn't do I didn't even change anything, didn't change the camera, didn't change the thumbnails. People say I posed for the thumbnails but I I, YouTube picks them out themselves, and when I do that, when I pose with the pizza or the burger or whatever, I'm kind of just making fun of the, you know, the people who really make those elaborate thumbnails. That's all I'm doing there. And if YouTube picks one of them, hey, I got lucky, you know. But, I mean, I didn't do anything. I didn't change anything with the channel. Now, all of a sudden, it gets some attention again, so I'm convinced it's YouTube just just messing around crazy how everything depends on that but that's just the nature of things I suppose some people uh, small number not too many criticized me um, about a few of my talks about statistics and they said you know don't uh, don't care too much about the statistics you know you uh, don't don't forget about your your roots as a as the channel and I could understand what they were saying but the people that say don't care about the statistics need to realize that I don't do this channel as a hobby anymore um, this channel specifically the reviews really it's my means of income it's not a lot of money, I'm poor, um, but it's enough at least to prevent me from starving to death, so that's good, you know. If I were, though, to stick to the basics of the channel, and it's a difficult thing to see, I, I, I understand that, but it's a necessary change just to survive, you know. If I were to have stuck to the basics, uh, such as using, you know, the old uh, analog camera in a, a dark lit room, uh, I'm sure a lot of those people would have enjoyed that more, but it would not be, no one would watch it, it wouldn't attract a, a mass audience, uh, which is necessary to bring in any sort of revenue for, for the channel at all. See, the way I like to look at this channel now is the reviews I do um, 
is what makes the money. And everything else, the radio show, um, the VORWs, and the random videos are for fun. You know. So what really is the most important thing are these reviews. Um, and after that, you know, the, that's why I can do these VORWs. It's, you know, it's for fun, essentially. So anyway, that's why I sometimes have to contemporize some things, um, such as have a better camera for the reviews, try and make the lighting a little more presentable, you know, all that. Because that's what matters there. Again, it needs to be realized that there's a little bit of a line there between what I do to make enough money just to keep keep going on and to sustain things rather than something that's just a hobby, you know. And that's why I care about the statistics, especially when it comes to the channel. When it comes to the VORWs, it's just interesting to me, but when it comes to the channel, so why statistics are uh, are an important thing, you know. But even when it comes to the channel and the profitability thereof, I mean, I still draw a fine line um, of things, you know, I, I still have a fine line because I still like remaining true to myself, you know. I have a fine line, you know, I'm not going to do those thumbnails or anything, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a real boisterous personality or wear different clothes or make myself look different because that's not me you know and if the channel one day becomes a big failure because of that well that's that's that you know so that was just a brief little discussion there about some uh, matters pertinent to the channel otherwise speaking of let's uh Let's look at the latest uploads here. Give me a minute. Had the uh, computer closed here. Let's take a look now. Let's go to YouTube. And let's take a look at the uh, latest uploads. Since the last... Since the last uh, VORW show. And let's take a gander here. I don't know. Let's see this. March 5th was uh, was the last VORW I did, number 142, so of course this is number 143, therefore. That same day was the Burger King Crispy Chicken Sandwich, uh, which I reviewed. And that was, that was an interesting one. It was interesting in that... I received the wrong sandwich at first. You know, I, I went to the drive-thru, and it was the manager that served me. So usually, you know, when it's the manager that's serving you there, you think, you know, they know what they're doing. Um, but that obviously isn't always the case. I went to Burger King, and I was getting, I was going to get this new crispy chicken sandwich to review, because it's supposed to be this, um, you know, this deluxe, uh, deluxe chicken sandwich that they were improving upon and it was in the news the fast food sites were talking about it so I thought to myself all right I'm gonna give this a shot I'm gonna see how how it is and they gave me their much smaller uh, chicken sandwich their junior chicken sandwich or whatever the name for it may be and I began filming, and I opened it up, and it was this disgrace of a sandwich, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought to myself, no, this can't be the crispy chicken sandwich. This can't be it. This can't be it. I went back in the store, I went to the counter there, and I showed them the receipt, because it, it had marked on the receipt, mind you, the crispy chicken sandwich, so it wasn't an error in terms of ordering. They made the wrong sandwich and gave it to me, so I told the employee very kindly, I said, you know, excuse me, there was, uh, I believe, an, uh, an error uh, with this. I believe I got the junior sandwich instead of the crispy one. The first thing the, uh, 
employee does is she looks at the receipt and looks back at the manager who is kind of starting to shuffle back towards the back room and uh, she immediately went and, and told them um, you know see I told you that s ain't right you know she said uh, she said swear word there but that's what she said and I uh, I know I can say it but I, I try and keep these shows clean in terms of that uh, but I thought it was amusing the reaction there and uh, they made me the right sandwich then it was nice and fresh at least and uh, and that was that then I had that and reviewed it and it was okay um, March 9th was the Meat Mountain from Arby's their uh, good old mountain of meat which was fair now people criticized me um, by, because I said it tasted like dog food and then gave it an 8.5 and some people said you know well why'd you do that and again some people need to realize that when something is reviewed it doesn't always need to be reviewed completely based off of taste but also based on what the actual purpose of the item is because there's some and some people don't realize this but some restaurants some fast food places specifically make items that have very little practicality when it comes to eating it but it's mostly just another means of advertising and I specifically cite um, for instance in terms of Pizza Hut for Valentine's Day they made the heart-shaped pizza and the pizza itself was really chewy you couldn't even it wasn't even cut at all very very impractical to actually eat but the main purpose of this pizza wasn't to be a practical meal or a feast or something to consume rather it's supposed to serve as something that you would get the pizza and you take a nice little selfie with you and your your partner or just you post it on Instagram or Facebook or, or Twitter or any other social media and share it with your friends your followers etc and say OMG look at this look at this adorable heart-shaped pizza from Pizza Hut and it's advertising for them it's supposed to be a different type of social media advertising really that's the that's the complete premise of that not to actually make a item to eat really and that's a secondary um, you know that's really the secondary goal of it and the same is true for the meat mountain from Arby's it's essentially just a means of advertising and that's it all right this meat mountain from Arby's isn't supposed to be something that some random office worker will get on their lunch break supposed to be something that you know that some guy and his frat boyfriends will go and have a nice eating challenge and uh, film it on YouTube and put it up and get a lot of views and it's a means of advertising for Arby's you know it's supposed to be something that'll really take the social media spotlight and get people talking and get the brand name Arby's uh, in the spotlight again that's the purpose of the meat mountain from Arby's and the main goal of course is for it to be a very big sandwich not to actually be an extremely flavorful one but rather be a massive massive sandwich and that it was so it it fulfilled its goal there and it was something that would get people talking um, so that's why I got the rating that it, that it had now otherwise uh, what else did we review March 13th tried the premium cod fillet fish sandwich from Wendy's fairly uh, unremarkable you know uh, a uh, Lent special um, codfish sandwich there March 16th <coughs> the Howie bread from Hungry Howie's had a real uh, fun time ordering that one I'm not even gonna talk about that March 17th the Krispy Kreme St. Patrick's Day green original glazed donut they were green and they were original glazed donuts and that was that but so many people were were interested in it so many I uh, 
I walked in the Krispy Kreme, and there was the most people I'd ever seen there. And I know I told the story about the, you know, for the crispy chicken sandwich review from Burger King, I talked about, you know, the crowd there, and I kind of uh, made fun of that. But this was legitimately extremely packed. Uh, everyone wanted the wanted the donuts there. You know, a half dozen, a dozen, three dozen, two dozen. I got my half dozen. But they were no different than a standard original glazed donut. But they were green. And personally, when it comes to these releases from Krispy Kreme, uh, I would wager that these ought to be for at least three days, I'd say, if they're going to set up the special green dough and, you know, hook it up to their their machine and whatnot and get it in such a way that it makes these green donuts, <coughs> they should at least have these special green donuts, you know, for, for three days or so, rather than just for one day after they go through all the trouble with, you know, switching up and putting the green dough in their, their donut making apparatus, you know. <laughs> Plus it'll cut down on the crowd size, but I'm not, I don't work for Krispy Kreme, it's up to them to decide. And then finally on March 20th, 2017, the Panda Express 5 flavor shrimp. With a uh, nice interlude there of uh, some shortwave radio listening while I ate. So that's that. And that was an outdoor review. I wanted to switch it up there. And uh, that it was. It was, uh, I can confirm, switched up. Switched up it was. And that's that, really. And that's what I have for you in terms of the review of the latest uploads. Ladies and gentlemen, this is VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so let's continue things here. Up next, I just have a few things to talk about in terms of radio. Of course, the VORW radio show. Um, but in general, a few other things as well. First and foremost, if you're in the U.S., um... I don't know if this has an impact to stores worldwide, but if you are in the United States, maybe you've heard the news that Radio Shack has filed for bankruptcy, and I think this is it for them. And it made me legitimately sad to think about how I think Radio Shack is, is really, they're going to be gone um, quite soon. Maybe a few little stores left here and there, but the majority of Radio Shacks are going to be gone. They're, they're going away for good, you know. They've already closed about almost 200 stores. They're closing another 300. And uh, all the Radio Shacks that I've seen in the area are all uh, looking like they're preparing to close down as well. And it's such a shame. Now, Radio Shack, I'm sure many of us are aware they're an electronics store uh, that sells products, um, everything from phone items, cell phones, smartphone related products, uh, products for your computer, electrical parts, um, and of course AM, FM, and even shortwave radios too, uh, as well as drones, RC toys, you name it. And it's a very interesting store but they've just had financial troubles for a while now and this is going to be it for them i think you know they were struggling with their original uh original premise of being just an electronics store so in 2014 they released an advertising campaign in the super bowl you might remember that where they said you know the 80s called and they want their store back and they're trying to make fun of their themselves by saying you know listen we're not just about selling fax machines and old radios and all that stuff but now we're we're hip and we're cool and we're selling smartphone stuff now but that didn't work and they filed for bankruptcy in 2015 and they closed a lot of stores and they just barely managed to keep their head above water 
and now in 2017, early 2017, they filed for bankruptcy again, and I figure they they can't escape it twice. You know, this is gonna be this is gonna be it for them. So they're closing stores left and right, but I'll say this right now: if you're interested in getting a shortwave radio right now. Go to your local Radio Shack and get one. I mean, every store that I've been to so far is just shutting their doors. And they're, they're all liquidating. They're getting rid of everything. And they're really... I mean, you can get them now anywhere from 30 to 50% off, even more. Uh, if the store is closing imminently, you might even get a radio that's 70% off, you know? You might get a... A $50 shortwave radio for under 20 bucks. Um, it might be a little more expensive than that, but some stores will have those types of discounts. I highly implore you, again, if you're interested in getting a shortwave radio, you know, they still have them on the shelves there. Get one. I, I, I say that right now. They're at a very discounted rate. And uh, I can personally attest to the fact that they are of good quality. So I say it now, before these stores are all closed down, while they're liquidating right now, they're going to have excellent sales. Now's the time to just walk in and buy one, if you're interested. They, by they I mean Radio Shack, there's a plane. Wait for it to go by. Radio Shack doesn't have the variety of radios that they once had, uh, and that's kind of sad. But if you go into the store, you'll see that they do have some AM, FM radios, some little pocket radios. Um, they have some tabletop weather band radios, a few crank radios. And they have two shortwave radios. Um, they have a small, tiny little pocket one. Okay. And then they have a smaller, it's a small little box, um, where it looks more like your standard radio, you know, like a, you know, kind of boxy looking. You'll be able to, to tell it apart. I can personally attest to the fact that it's a quality radio, because I went to Radio Shack yesterday, and I bought the last one there. Um, because again, this store was closing, they're liquidating. And I said, you know, I'm going to get another shortwave radio there and see. Maybe it'll be a, a good one that I got at a good, good price. And it is. You know. Uh, the radio that they have there is, uh, it's battery operated, but you can buy some heavily discounted AA batteries there too. Um, or some rechargeable batteries or whatever. The whole store is, you know, getting really sold out. And I read the instruction manual for this uh, shortwave radio. I uh, went outside and tried it out, and you got to get the hang of it first. But it, for what it is, and for what you're getting, it's probably, and I have, I think, five radios now capable of receiving shortwave. This is definitely my second best radio compared uh, with the, the Texan PL660 being the, the best one that I have. This second one, it's small, but it does a good job, and it's able to pick up some faraway stations still uh, with pretty good signals. So again, I highly, highly recommend that if you're thinking about getting a just a little shortwave radio, you know, maybe not for real long distance listening, but something, I mean, if, if things ever hit the fan, you'll be thankful you got it. That's all I can say. So if you're ever interested in that, just go over to Radio Shack and get it. Get it while it's still there. You know? I mean, when I was trying out this little radio, the first station I was able to pick up was uh, Radio Oman, uh, which is just using a 100-kilowatt transmitter all the way from Oman. You know? Almost half a world away. And I was able to pick that up just fine, coming in coming in great. 
So it's a good radio, it does a good job receiving signals. And if you find that it's 50% off, and you can afford to get it, then go for it. I know I always mention shortwave radio in terms of a hobby perspective, but you also need to remember that, you know, there's there's a lot more to it than just a hobby to, to listen to international broadcasters, you know? People always make fun of this if there is a disaster type scenario or of, you know, a, a, a war or a political upheaval or whatever. Some sort of emergency situation or as some people say a uh, SHTF, S hit the fan, situation. The importance of a shortwave radio in it. And in something like that, you want to hope that something like that never ever happens to you and that you'll never have to use it. But it can still happen to you. It still can. It still can. Wars happen. Governments get overthrown. Natural disasters happen. Just because none of that ever happened to you, doesn't mean it won't. So keep that in mind. You know? Just because that Category 5 hurricane ended up missing you, and the whole area didn't get destroyed, doesn't mean that the next one won't. Sounds very pessimistic, but just because World War III got averted this time around doesn't mean that'll happen every time. And just because there wasn't a military coup or some sort of government takeover or you name it this time around doesn't mean that there never will be. can get a cheap shortwave radio right now and in that type of situation might literally be your last link to the outside world you might say yeah well what what good is listening to radio romania or the voice of turkey going to do for me well first and foremost if there was really such a dire situation both of those stations and any other you know, government-run stations that aren't, you know, from the U.S. or whatnot, or from extremely well-known news sources. These stations still have news. They still have international news. They still talk about current events. So number one, that's already a source of information right there. And number two, if things ever went so bad that you would need a shortwave radio as your only link to the outside world, there will be broadcasts sent your way. I remember when there was Hurricane Matthew. Um, very strong hurricane. It looked like it was going to just decimate Florida. The Voice of America, what did they do? They started up two shortwave transmissions beamed down into the Caribbean. And they, they were heard very, very well in Florida too with news on the hour every hour with updates and what have you uh, but I thought shortwave radio was dead I thought there weren't going to be any stations broadcasting to my area if something bad was going to happen there were there were and this happens all the time still if in other parts of the world, if something really bad happens, you see broadcasters such as the Voice of America, the BBC World Service, etc. start up additional transmissions to serve that affected region. So don't worry about that. You'll manage to hear something. Some broadcaster, 
broadcasters, if it was really bad, even in the domestic U.S. or what have you, might even preempt their own programming to air news and what have you. Back in 05, or when Hurricane Katrina was there, you know, really hit New Orleans, the Christian shortwave station, World Harvest Radio International, preempted their own religious programming and aired a local AM station from New Orleans via their shortwave transmitters to the area uh, so that the people there, because shortwave was their only link to the outside world since all the radio transmitters locally were damaged or inaudible, they could still get their news that was potentially life-saving. So, all I'm saying is that if you are ever thinking about a, getting a shortwave radio, even if you don't care about listening as a hobby, but just for having it for potential disaster scenario, it doesn't hurt to just give it a little bit of a look. Because right now you can get a fairly good radio. It's not now. It's not a, a you know as good as the Texan PL660, but it'll be able to receive signals. It will. I can that you can trust me on that. And if you get it, don't feel the need to sit there trying to use it every single night and not being able to hear something. You can keep it in the box, sitting on a shelf in your room. For years, as long as you have the batteries for it. Then if things ever happen, power goes out, Wi Wi-Fi of course is gone, internet's gone, can't get anything on your phone. For some weird reason you can't hear the FM stations either. AM stations aren't really coming in good. Take the radio out of its box, put the batteries in, and start checking the shortwave and see what you can pick up. And maybe you'll be able to hear a voice out there. All I'm saying is that if the, the thoughts ever cross your mind, just think about it, that's all. And right now there's just a good opportunity that exists to get some shortwave radios out there at a very affordable price, uh, since Radio Shack's going out of business. To begin with, there aren't many stores out there nowadays that you could even find a shortwave radio right on the shelves there. Radio Shack's one of the last ones, and just take advantage of it before it's gone, that's all. So that's what I have for you there. Again, let's make sure we're still recording. We are, okay. What else do I have to talk about? Well, speaking of shortwave, VORW, of course, is on shortwave. Um, I'm heard on shortwave. I have several shortwave transmissions every Thursday. I'll get to being able to listen to those in a second, but I'll provide you with a little update. If you were subscribed to the, the VORW newsletter, you got an announcement um, about the frequency changes. If you weren't, well, I mentioned in the last show that you could inquire to be subscribed to it. But anyway, there were some frequency changes for the VORW show, some frequency and time changes, especially to Europe. Uh, I think you might remember from the last show, I kind of talked about how I was a little bit concerned about the Channel 292 station in, uh, in Europe, you know, about this alleged uh, lawsuit that's going on there and their false claims about their competitor shortwave service and whatnot. And I was, I was getting a bad taste in my mouth about them. but. I wasn't sure what to do, if I should continue utilizing their services to broadcast to Europe, or what? Well, they pretty much made the decision for me. I dropped their services, I stopped using them, and they're a very unprofessional, unprofessional business. 
that either holds grudges or doesn't care about their clients one bit. Um, because really they were, I'd say, for whatever reason, part of me suspects that they're holding these people at this, uh, this channel 292 station that I use for my transmissions to Europe. Um, I think they were holding a very silly grudge against me because I utilized their competitor um, to get that broadcast to Asia, you know, from the uh, Uzbekistan transmitter. I think they were holding a grudge against me and they, they, they stopped replying to any email I sent them. And they stopped replying to my requests to air the programs and all of that. They completely stopped. And they've ignored me for weeks now. And I said, forget it with you people. You know, to do that to a client is completely and totally idiotic. And that is how you lose business. So I do not use their services anymore. And I'm now, I now have a broadcast to Europe via radio station WRMI uh, with a 100 kilowatt transmitter. It's here in Florida and it's beamed over the Atlantic to Europe. I already aired a broadcast from them and uh, so far so good. It was, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was received pretty good. It was received throughout the UK well, received in Central Europe, you know, in Germany, uh, and it was even received in Moscow, Russia with good signals anyway, so it was, they're a good good provider and it seems as though they provided a pretty good signal into Europe at least so that's good but anyway I had to switch transmission providers there because of some someone's grudge or lack of professionalism or caring to respond to clients so that's that but nonetheless nonetheless we're still we're still going along the RW show still is uh, building up an audience in Japan now, you know, I am, uh, I, I've had the test broadcast going to Japan from, from, uh, the WRMI station for a little while now, and that, the signals in Japan haven't been the best on that one, listenable but very weak, um, but there's still now a base of Japanese listeners that tune in every week. Uh, and even request some songs and give their comments and feedback on the show and I think that's pretty cool that there's a little bit of a Japanese audience on the shortwave now that listens to and back uh, about two weeks ago I also had a special transmission via the shortwave service I kind of talked about that was uh, that was beamed over to Japan as well, and that was via a 100 kilowatt transmitter in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. And that one I was very interested to see, I think you remember me talking about that, I was very interested in seeing what, where it was, where it would reach and how many people would write in exactly. And the response was overwhelming. The response was, uh, was something else. I've, I've never gotten so many uh, emails from shortwave listeners before uh, about a broadcast. It was, uh, it was very crazy after, you know, after the broadcast I got around, no, I count them all, I got around a hundred emails that came in, you know, um, pretty quickly too. I kept refreshing the page and there were four more new emails and then four and then five and then two after that and they just kept coming in and, and uh, coming in. And there were the, most of the emails came from listeners throughout Japan uh, who were tuned in on their shortwave radios that heard the broadcast. <coughs> and there were a lot from Russia too, believe it or not. <coughs> All parts of Russia, really. Southern Russia, Western Russia, Eastern Russia uh, tuned in as well on their shortwave radios that were that were listening. There were listeners in Russia that were tuned in. Lots of listeners in Japan. Um, there were some 
listeners in Europe that heard some of the transmission as well. Some listeners in Austria, Germany, uh, Ukraine, Bulgaria, and even as far as the UK heard this transmission that was beamed over to Japan. And they all listened in too. Some sent some YouTube videos showing how the broadcast came in. Uh, there were <coughs> there were listeners throughout India that wrote in a good number of them. Uh, some folks in uh, Bangladesh were listening as well, and even even a few people in Indonesia were tuned to the station as well. So that was very very fun. Um, I think the most unique listeners that I had were a few that were in uh, the city of Tashkent, Uzbekistan, where the transmitter was. Uh, they said they listened to the programs from this transmitter uh, all day, pretty much, because it's so close. They can get the ground wave signals very strong from it. And I said they heard the VORW show, and they wrote in and told me they were listening. So I had even had a few people in Uzbekistan listening to VORW. I thought that was neat. But I, I responded to every email and got a QSL out to the people who wanted one. And overall, it was such a, a great success. It was such a great success, at least there's an audience out there, but when it comes to actually being able to broadcast to Asia, you know, money's just not there. It's a shame. There's an audience out there, at least to to broadcast to it, but I guess I should start buying lotto tickets to be able to reach them more often, but it was a very fun experience, very enjoyable, and uh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that that was able to happen, and it got the reception that it did, and I think it, it proved to me, really, uh, that people in some parts of the world still do uh, listen to shortwave, even casually, or for entertainment, or whatnot, and it was very nice, and it was fun to hear the comments from all the different listeners around the world and get some music requests from from places that I've never, uh, you know, gotten requests from. A few listeners in India requested some songs for the show, uh, a few in Japan did, some in Germany and Austria, and it was just, it was fun overall. It was a very fun experience. I always love broadcasting to these parts of the world that, you know, are... are aren't usually reached uh, with my regular broadcasts. So it was just a whole lot of fun there. You know. Whole lot of fun. And the regular broadcasts on WBCQ were, uh, were good too. We got a, a bunch of regular listeners in the US and, and Canada that listen and uh, some shortwave listeners too throughout the US that are tuned in. Um, that's still nice at least and so far we'll be able to sustain the WBCQ and maybe uh, some of the WRMI broadcasts for a little while but maybe I'll get lucky and we'll find uh, find a way to get some more broadcasts from uh, you know that Uzbekistan site or what have you to reach Asia um, more regularly you know oh who knows but and that's what I got there. If you are interested in listening, of course, the VORW radio program is heard every Thursday uh, via shortwave radio, but if you don't have a radio, you can listen online very easily. Uh, it can be heard on 5850 kilohertz to Western North America and East Asia at a time of 6 a.m. Eastern. It's 10 a.m. GMT uh, on 5850 and 6855 kilohertz. You can hear it also later in the day at 4 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. GMT on 11580 kilohertz to Europe. And in the evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, that's midnight GMT, you can tune to 7490 kilohertz and listen via WBCQ to North America. Now, you know those times and frequencies, that's a bit, a bit complicated. Huh? I don't have a radio, so I want to listen. What can I do? I can hook you up. If you remember in the last show, 
I linked a paste bin file in the video. Well, I'm going to do it again. I have a new paste bin file. You can see it right here. There's the link to it, pastebin.com slash DFS DX72W. There's the link to it. You see it there. And look at this. Links to listen to the VORW program via shortwave updated March 15th, 2017. And it's an organized file with all the links that you need to be able to hear the broadcast. Isn't that easy? Look at that. There's the first broadcast, Thursday, 6 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. GMT, the frequency. See these links here? All you need to do is just highlight the link, copy, paste it, or just go to it. Automatically, it just links you to an online shortwave radio, already tuned to that frequency, and that's it. You're fine. You're good to go. That's it. All you need to do is just click on that link right there, copy, paste, and you're done. Want to listen to the 4 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. GMT broadcast? Scroll down a little bit, and there's some more links you can click on. Just click on any of them. All of these are just those online radios pre-tuned to it, and you're fine. You want to listen online on a digital audio feed? You can stay up a little later, or whatever. Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, at the bottom there, 12 a.m. GMT, 7490 kilohertz to North America. There's the link to a tune-in radio digital stream that you can tune in at, uh, at that time of the broadcast. You'll hear a live audio feed. There's the MP3 stream link as well. And then below that, if you want to listen on the analog quality, there's the links to all these receivers too. It's a lot easier. So much easier than having to explain and get you to type in the links to the receivers or whatever. When all you need to do is go to this file here, this paste bin document, and that's it. Go at it, find the time that's best for you, and literally copy and paste any of these links and you can hear the broadcast live right there. That's how easy it is. Pastebin.com slash DFSDX72W Incredibly, incredibly easy. One, two clicks. That's it. One click for the link here to get to the paste bin document. Second click just to get on any of these links to listen, and that's it. I think that's pretty effortless, if you ask me. Doesn't really get any easier than that. And if you missed a broadcast and you want to listen to archived shows, I have a SoundCloud page now for the programs you can tune to. soundcloud.com slash v-o-r-w underscore radio underscore i-n-t so v-o-r-w radio int or international but v-o-r-w radio int with underscores between those words there or if you're you really want to you can just type in v-o-r-w radio international into the search bar there and really the first thing that comes up is my SoundCloud page there, and you can listen, and there's the links to all the recent shows, um, and it'll be updated every week that you can, uh, you can be able to, to tune in there. So that's what I got for you there. It's very, very easy to listen, and uh, I hope you'll be able to tune in. So that's what we got there for you, and uh, that's what we got really. Now again, if you're interested in in uh, tuning in, you know, you have every way you can do so. And remember, every Thursday that's the VORW day, and uh, that's what we got for you. All right. So with that being said. That's all I have to talk about in terms of radio there. Coming up next is the mailbag program where we read and respond to your listener letters. Ladies and gentlemen, this is VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week. And this is VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week. 
And this is now the fan mail segment where I read and respond to listener letters. If you are interested in participating, you may email me at repweekinterview1 at gmail.com. Uh, or if you really want to, you can email me at vorwinfo at gmail.com, though I usually reserve that for, uh, for radio-related uh, emails now. But no matter what, do remember that if you do write to me, writing in is voluntary. It used to be, sorry, it used to be a few months back that I would read every letter that I get. Um, but eventually it just got too much, and it was too much to handle, and I couldn't make a show for weeks. It took so long to record. So writing in is now voluntary. Some people, for better or for worse, like to make it all about me, 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 you know? They expect that if their letter is sent in, that it just has to be read. But that is not always the case. Please remember that. Writing in is voluntary, and always write in with the expectation that your letter will not be read. Um, yes, chances are it will be, but it needs to be understood uh, that your letter may not be read. So just keep that in mind and prepare for uh, prepare for the worst. Um, but chances are, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll hear your letter read. So now that we know that it's voluntary, and now that you know how to write in, go for it if you want. But let's read some letters now, shall we? <clears throat> Good. Okay. Got some nice uh, dogs barking in the background there for that added uh, ASMR effect. Nothing like a VORW with some dogs barking. You know, it'll put you right to sleep. You'll be sleeping like a baby with this. I wonder what they're saying. I don't know if you could even hear them or not. I don't know. I think I oftentimes imagine that this microphone's more sensitive than I think it is. Um, so be it. YouTube VORW. Hey John, what's new in your world? Same old, same old in mine. 142 is another great VORW as always. I had sent the topic suggestion, but I believe I accidentally sent it in comment form instead of email, so you may not have seen it. And I apologize if so. Just shows how scatterbrained my mind has been as of late, with all troubles I'm going through at work. Anyways, the suggestion was for you to possibly read an excerpt or two from your latest short story that you've been editing. I personally would love to hear how it's coming along. Hope the idea helps, and take care, my friend. Until next time, your old pal Brax. So thank you, Brax, for writing in, a uh, long-time listener, viewer. So thank you. And thank you for the suggestion, too. Um, I know I keep pushing it, but now that I have that idea fresh in my mind, maybe I'll save that for the next show there, and uh, maybe we'll, we'll read a little bit of a uh, short story in the next one, so we'll see about that. Thank you, though. Lots of planes flying around today. But they were all, you know, propeller, propeller planes. There was a. Uh, so one time there was a whole squad of uh, Air Force jets that flew by, and those were extremely loud. But these propeller planes, they can have a nice little droning, uh, droning sound to them. And there, I don't know. I can't see this one. There, there it goes. I guess. Wherever it is. I always like to kind of look for them, but I can't. I can't see this one. Our next letter. Hello, John. I recently took a road trip uh, around where I live, and I thought I'd send some pictures in. I know you mentioned that you like scenery pictures, and I was wondering a couple things. Uh, number one, do you still listen to the music playlist you made on YouTube? Uh, are they still all your favorites? And do you update it? Well, firstly, to answer your question there, I still do. Um, for a while, I made the YouTube music playlist private um, because a stupid couple stupid idiots in the uh, meme crowd uh, were making fun of my music taste. You know. Boy, this plane is going in low right here. And there it goes. 
thought it was going to crash for a minute. Anyway, a couple idiots in the uh, meme crowd were making fun of my music playlist, and they were making fun of the fact that I had some North Korean music in, and that I had a, a Christian song or two in there, and I said, you know, F you guys, I'm, I'm sorry for that, but I, you know, it frustrated me, and thought I'm just going to make the playlist private. Um, but now I decided to make it public again, and I still do listen, I still listen, and, uh, I still enjoy the contents, and I'll even uh, update it a little bit too. So, you know, it's I don't update it as vigorously anymore, but I'll still update it every now and then. And uh, secondly, um, does your camera have a remote to end filming, or do you uh, edit the last bit of turning the camera off? Uh, currently listening to VORW 142, already looking forward to the end. Well, thank you. Usually, it has a a little bit of a timer you can set that'll that'll shut it off. A little remote you can you know you can turn it off with. Um, but sometimes I have to manually turn it off, and it always it depends. If I really need to, if it's really you know a very long pause at the end or what have you, um, and it really detracts from the video, but that might get edited out, but usually it's it's unedited, you know, from start to finish. Thank you for your email, and thank you for all the lovely pictures. They're very, very nice, pretty pictures there, so thank you. Very nice. Um, let's see. Review King, that's what this one's titled. Hello, I just wanted to email you uh, to let you know that you are listened to and are doing a great job. I love your VORW shows. Whenever I listen to your shows, it makes me relax and takes me away from this crazy world we live in, um, but that's that. You've opened my eyes to a lot of subjects and thoughts. You're super funny and a smart individual. Keep making these shows. Uh, I do have some topics you can talk about in the next show. Uh, like making it easier to listen to your shows like uh, SoundCloud or podcasts on iTunes. I know that you uh, made it easier to listen to because you talked about it on number 142, but SoundCloud or podcasts would be great. And to interject, I'm a little step ahead of you, at least for the, uh, the radio programs. Uh, I got the SoundCloud channel going for that. Anyway, to continue, um, to bring back... Please bring back night walks. Night walks are the best thing. I sometimes only look forward to VRW shows with night walks in them. Um, so if you can do more night walks, that'd be sick. Uh, and that is sick with uh, several Ks at the end for emphasis, as well as a number of exclamation points. So, you know, sick. And um, finally, where could you get a shortwave radio to listen to your program and what kind? And I did talk about that in this one, of course. You can you can go to multiple online retailers. Um, but if you want to go into a store and get one, uh, of course there's Radio Shack right now. You can get a heavily discounted one. And Reception for the broadcast would be best, I'm sure, outside. If you were listening outside, you know, on your deck or your balcony or outside doing whatever. But you could probably hear it inside too if you put the radio near a window there. A few more topics, he said. You can talk about uh, Bigfoot and mythical creatures, the deep web, rap music, more of your dreams, and stuff like that. Um, but really, just keep up the good work, making a lot of people like myself uh, happy and keeping me sane. I hope you read this on your next show. Uh, your homie from uh, Sam. Sam, thank you. S Sam, for writing in. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh... Some of those topics I've discussed in the past, but we'll definitely keep them in mind. A few of them I inadvertently discussed, actually. Um, thank you very much. Now, this individual attached a few pictures. Pictures for the, uh, the program here. Here's 
very nice thank you i love the black and white one there that's 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 very nice and uh that's the black and white one of the low lighting i enjoy that one and this one i didn't i didn't see myself for uh, for a second it's uh a picture from probably the 60s or so of uh, a Burger King there, old school Burger King, and there's some cars in the parking lot. And then in one of the cars, there I am sitting in there uh, with, a, with a, the, the chicken sandwich in my hand. <laughs> Thank you for those pictures. They're very nice, and they'll uh, they'll be proudly displayed in this uh, latest VORW show. So thank you very much for uh, for your time and effort there. Hey brother, my girlfriend is your biggest fan. We watch all of your videos the day they come out. I'm in Nicaragua and we rarely communicate and can rarely communicate with her. Uh, and if you gave her a shout out, it would make her life. Her name is Alicia. Thank you for reading from Brad. Thank you, Brad, and I'll be happy to give uh, your girlfriend Alicia uh, a shout out. So, Alicia, you have been officially and formally shouted out here on VORW. Uh, so, if you're listening, you have been shouted out. You got shout out there. Um, what else do we have here? Hello, Report of the Week. Checking in again. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I was actually in a pretty good mood this last week or so. Uh, there had been some positive developments, uh, but then it all came crashing down and back to normal. I won't ramble on into too many details, but I've been talking to a girl I met, and we arranged a date to, quote, hang out, end quote. Uh, though at the last minute she texted me saying that she couldn't see me as she had a boyfriend. So that kind of had me down now. Um, but. I've been experiencing a lot of failures and rejections of girls lately, and sometimes I try to enact uh, the ideology about not worrying about having relationships, but it's hard not to sometimes. Uh, I generally am more of a loner type, and like being alone, I figure it'd be nice to have a, uh, a companion. That's all that I have to share until next time. And thank you for writing there, and uh, I'm sorry things have been... Uh, been tough. You know, I'm sorry about that. I mean, strikes me a little uh, odd that uh, someone already with a, a boyfriend would uh, arrange a date, but maybe they face a little bit of a, a moral dilemma as to what to do, you know. Um, I'm sorry about that, though. You know, there's I know it sounds like a stupid thing, but if you're interested, I mean, you could always try the uh, online dating sites. I know some people make fun of them, saying that all the people that use those just want, you know, some big, uh, big, you know, Chad type guy with a lot of money. Um, but it does, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. That's all. If you're really looking and you're really interested in finding someone to to date or whatnot can always try you you won't know until you try some people try and try and make it look like you know it's completely futile to use these online services but if you've never used one in the first place what do you have to lose you know take the 15 minutes set up a profile and go for it you know so there's an idea you know, if you're interested I'm really not any sort of, uh, if you ever, ever listen to the radio show Delilah, you know, sometimes some FM stations will relay her programming when they got nothing better to do, and she's this guru, you know, that takes phone calls about relationships and plays music and, you know, I'm not anyone like that, but I'm just giving you some quick advice there. <coughs> Let's see. Our next next letter. Good evening, bra. I say good evening because it's 7:23 p.m. Central Standard Time as I begin this message. I was listening to an old VRW show where you 
mention sometimes that you sleep a short amount of time and wake up feeling more rested than you sleep a longer period of time. I often experience this and I believe it's due to waking at the end of an REM sleep cycle versus waking in the middle of an REM sleep cycle. I have the same kind of feeling because I work from 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. three or four nights a week and sleep can be very elusive. I appreciate your work you put into your channel uh, for all of us and I feel lately that you've been giving us a little fan service and the videos have had more humor and have been even more enjoyable lately. Hope this means that you're feeling good and things have been going well for you. They have. Uh, and maybe, uh, maybe it is a little sad comment on the state of my life lately, but your videos have really been the highlight of my week. I have attached an attempt at a fan art I whipped up for you, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, I'm no great artist, but I felt inspired. Well, thank you. Thank you for the art there. Very nice. Pleated priest and cuff. That's the that's the holy trio right there. For for men's dress pants. Pleated priest and cuffed. And uh, thank you very much for that. I think the REM sleep cycle and position thereof once you wake up is important. Um, there's been times where I've slept 12 hours and I'll wake up and I'll feel like I'm I'm dying you know I can't can barely even function you know I don't feel any any more abnormal aside from that uh, but you know it's probably was in a long sleep woke up at the wrong time or you know the REM cycle and just feel even with such a massive tremendous sleep there it's it's just something, you know, it's just how it is, I guess. Boy, the planes keep coming, one propeller plane after another. Well, you get some nice plane sounds, at least. Anyway, on to the next. Hey there, once again, friend. Sarah here. Thanks for reading my message in the last VRW and answering my questions. I have another one for you uh, if you do happen to come across this message as well. Do you have a sweet tooth? And if not, what's your favorite type of snacking foods? Love your videos. Have a good day. Thank you uh, for your letter. Uh, you know, I have a big sweet tooth. Maybe some sugary drinks. But I'm not a big candy eater. You know. Sometimes chocolate. I'll uh, snack on some chocolate. Some Hershey's chocolate. Some Cadbury chocolate. Cadbury's good. Um, the Dove chocolate can be pretty good too. The Dove, you know. But sometimes I'll snack on some chocolate. But I don't, I don't have the biggest uh, sweet tooth in the... Uh, in the, the world. Uh, and then there's another email to follow it up from the same uh, Sarah. Uh, Hello again, a follow up to my previous email. Would you ever consider having a Skype? Uh, I don't know if you'd like it considering your uh, introversion, but I think it would be a nice experience. Uh, my friend, who's a big fan of yours, would probably like having a discussion with you. He seems truly interested and, and even concerned for you. Um, and and that's really the, the question have a nice day no I don't have a Skype and I'm not interested in expanding to that venue you know I'm, I'm just I'm not a whole big fan of the you know the live chat type of thing that's you know comes down to personal preference um, that's just how it is I my my real comfort zone is being here with a microphone and recording, um, especially when it comes to the shortwave radio, I mean, the, I don't know, that's, that's really my place, and it's a shame that there's, you know, it's not really that sustainable, but I mean, the audience there is just so, 
so much more mature compared to some of the people that watch the food reviews, you know, no, you know, just everyone's so polite, so, um, so friendly, so mature, they always have some nice feedback, some music requests, some, you know, positive comments and whatnot, it's a great audience, and it's, maybe it's kind of reminiscent of the audience I always wanted for, uh, some of the food reviews, and I'm able to get that with the shortwave broadcast, so that's why I'm truly comfortable. Um, the YouTube VORW shows are great too, and even the food reviews are, are uh, always very fun to do as well. You know, I just disregard a lot of the comments and trolls and whatnot, but, um, you know, the videos themselves are real fun to make too. I, I always enjoy it. Um, but, you know, the whole live chat type of thing, Skyping, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. It's, uh, well, it's just not what I'm... You know, not what I'm a fan of, that's all. Comes down to personal preference. Anyway. Our next... Next one. Hello. I just wanted to email you today to say I'm a fan of your videos and love your style. Uh, it's very refreshing to see such uniqueness in today's tasteless society. I hope all is well with you and that you have a, a wonderful day. That uh, was from uh, Christina. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, short email, Christina. And uh, happy that you like the style, so thank you. Thank you for writing. What other emails are there to be read? <coughs> Dear John, Hello, sorry for not writing in last week, as I have been completely swamped recently. It's currently one of my favorite times of the year. The new university semester has just started, and I'm beginning to ease back into the routine, uh, and the summer months have ended. I have some shortwave news for you, albeit about a month old now, but still relevant. I don't think you touched it in your VRWs. Uh, it's rather disappointing, but Radio Australia's Northern Territory has uh, pulled the plug on its rural shortwave um, for everything but emergencies, and I'm not sure why, uh, though it seems like Australia really has something against shortwave. The reason given by the ABC for this cut is that it would save $3 million, uh, which they can use for digital software. I've linked an article to this, including a radio interview uh, at the end of this email. Uh, to... Uh, to interject there, yeah, it's really a shame, and they, uh, the Senate inquiry is moving along, you know, that bureaucracy takes, a takes an hour and a day to get anything done, that's every country, not just the U.S., but Australia, too, you know, they sit there in Congress and Senate and whatever, whatever it may be, Parliament, and, uh, no, it just takes forever, no matter what it is. But they were, they were inquiring about it, and uh, it's it's moving along. There's definitely a panel of Australian senators, more than I had originally thought, that very clearly still see the importance of shortwave, and that's wonderful to see that there's still a board of politicians over there uh, that recognize that shortwave is not just a outdated legacy technology, but it, and it's useful not only for day-to-day -day life for some, but also in the event of emergencies as well. Um, especially in, in the Northern Territory there. Um, very, very remote areas. And we'll see. We just got to keep hoping for the best that they'll, you know, they'll bring back the shortwave transmissions eventually. Um, so we'll just keep our eye on it. That's all I can say. You know. Uh, anyway, the letter here continues. I'd like to recommend some novels for you. Uh, I'd like to recommend John Williams' Stoner, uh, as well as William Faulkner's Wild Palms. Uh, these are two American post and modern authors, respectively. Stoner is actually my favorite novel and is a very uh, moving piece about how we look at life. Wild Palms, on the other hand, is one of the more interesting novels I've read. It focuses on two non-intertwining stories, and it's very clever. And that's all I can say about giving too much away, and I hope you'll like them. 
And finally, I'm looking for some advice. It looks like I've been relegated to overnight shifts at work now, which can be a hassle. It works well in the aspect that I can attend all of my classes, but it's really affecting my sleep schedule, as you can imagine. Three, four days out of the week, I'm finishing work at 6 a.m., while the other days I have to wake up at 6 a.m. Uh, to be on time for classes. Some nights I don't sleep at all and travel straight from work to the university. Uh, however, my body is coping, and as I have cut caffeine out of my life, I don't feel as if it is damaging physically. It's something I can put up with. Anyway, to get to the point, I've been considering finding work elsewhere, but this would mean taking a rather heavy pay cut and subsequently moving apartments again to something more affordable. Furthermore, my lease doesn't expire until November, uh, which would make it less mean uh, manageable to move. I have three years left in my degree, and I'm not sure if I can continue this way for such a long period of time. Any advice would be useful no matter how small. As always, thanks for all of the hard work. Regards from Liam. Well, thank you, Liam. Thank you very much for the email, and I'll be happy to uh, offer some little advice for you. Well, here's what I have. Number one, take a look at, you know, when, at, at the schedule, really, in terms of work and classes. If there is no gap whatsoever, meaning there are some days where, you know, work, I'm just going to throw out some numbers here, say, let's just say theoretically that work ends at 6 a.m., you know, and you usually go to sleep from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and get a healthy, you know, the 5, 6 p.m., get a healthy 8, 9 hours of sleep. But there are some days where you have classes at noon and 1 p.m., and it's completely interfering with that block of time that you need to sleep. And that's a problem there. Um, that's a... That's a big problem. <clears throat> now, obviously, switching classes is a very uh, iffy thing, especially once the first, you know, week or two is over. Um, that's almost impossible, but here's what I have to say. Number one, switching jobs is a risky thing to do unless you know 100% you can immediately get a replacement. Um, so that's the first thing. It's very... It's it's taking a gamble. It's like rolling the dice. There's a chance that I can, you know, switch to jobs um, and immediately be able to get a replacement there that will not make that much money, but it'll perhaps be enough that'll put some bread on the table. And it might also be where that job opening that you thought there would be isn't there anymore, and now you've also, you know, essentially cut your ties with this third shift job as well. Um... So that itself is a problem, too. So it's a difficult situation. If you really want to give, you know, take a risk, you can try to get a job at a more adequate time, um, but at the same time, that financial aspect might, might get to you as well. At the same time, though, managing a third shift job and managing perhaps a daytime school schedule leaves very room, very little room in terms of sleep. And you need to see how, how your body is coping with it. I say that, and I'm going to give you some unconventional advice here. Um, but I'm speaking from personal experience. Look at your body. And it's been about a week or so since you've sent this message. So look at it in the meantime. And since then. How well have you really been coping? How tired do you feel? How much sleep can you function with? Ask yourself these questions and begin to reflect things. There are some people out there who need 9 to 12 hours of sleep per night to be able to just function the next day at all. And there's other people who can get as little as 3 to 4 hours of sleep and function. Maybe I used to see those infographs, you know, 
about the different sleep schedules, you know, the every man's sleep schedule and the uber man's sleep schedule and this and that and how you can function off of these limited periods of sleep. And you might have thought about trying that every now and then. Well, I've tried that actually and I was able to do it for, let me think now, eight months straight, if you would believe that. Um, back in 2014 and 2015, I was on one of those sleep schedules where I got anywhere from three to four hours of sleep per 24 hour period and I was able to function every single day for eight months straight with that little sleep. Nowadays I get a lot more sleep, I'll get, you know, between eight and, you know, ten hours a night but I was able to function, albeit with the help of some caffeine each morning and, you know, but I was able to do it. My sleep schedule at the time was as follows. Um, we'll start, I guess, we'll start the clock at, I don't know, midnight, I guess, the new day, right? Here's what my sleep schedule at the time would be. I would be awake until 4 a.m. Um, I would begin preparations to take my first nap at 4 a.m. and I would get to sleep at around 4.30 or so and I would sleep from usually 4.30, 4.45 a.m. to 7 a.m. So that's around two and a half hours of sleep right there. I would get up after that time of rest at 7 a.m. I would then stay up through the morning, through the afternoon, and I would rest again at 4 p.m. I would prepare for sleep and I'd usually get to sleep a little faster and I would usually be out like a light from 4 p.m. to around 6, 6.30 p.m. So 4 to 5, 5 to 6, you know, usually two, two and a half hours. Um, and I would end up getting around four to four and a half hours of sleep per day. Then I'd wake up at around 6 p.m. I would get up and I would stay up again to around 4 a.m. It's completely possible. It's manageable with some people, I would presume. I don't think, I don't know if everyone's body can handle it. Maybe you could. I don't recommend doing that unless you have to. I mean, I, <clears throat> you know, I did it. Did it for eight months straight, every single day. It was tough waking up, um, especially in the from the from the 4 a.m. to the 7 a.m. sleep. It was always the toughest. I don't know why it was, but that one I would usually need to, you know, take a nice good slug of an energy drink to get me going for the, for the day. Um, so it's entirely possible. If you think your body can handle that, again, I. It's very unconventional, and don't don't really do it to yourself unless you have to, but if you think you can handle it, consider looking into that in order to cope um, with the schedule change. If you think that this periodic napping, um, say, of, you know, two hours here and two hours there, to get only four to five hours of sleep a day, ends up working for you, you can do one of those um, unconventional sleep schedules that might allow you to utilize and fit in both schedules successfully. Um, so that's my advice to you there, but I can personally again attest to those sleep schedules that they worked for me. I can't say that they worked for you though. I'm not going to be like one of those guys you see on TV trying to sell you a product. I'm not, I can't guarantee that it'll work for you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but again it's another risk. Um, and you got to see if you're interested in taking that risk or not. And on a final note, when it comes to scheduling classes again for another uh, semester, um, perhaps trying to perhaps try and schedule classes at the most convenient times uh, so that they can accommodate your work schedule as well. And that's what I got for you.
Uh, let's see what else we have here. Kathy wrote in. Um, she sent a very nice piece of uh, fan art about a year ago. It's actually uh, one of my favorite pieces, uh, believe it or not, of all time. I thought it was such, so excellently done that I, you know, I'm going to feature it again in this program. I thought it was very, very nicely done. You can tell that a lot of hard work and effort uh, went into it. And she said, uh, I know it's old news, um, but since I, I uh, told you I would, I had a, access to a decent camera, and here's a better photograph of the portrait I painted of you. Um, the perception was off in the last one, and it bugged me. Hope things are well, and I'm looking forward to the next VRW. Well, thank you. And uh, she got a better picture of this uh, painting, which she submitted about a year ago. And again, I'll re-feature it, so thank you very much, Kathy, and uh, thank you. Very nicely done there. We got a few more emails to read here, and uh, let's see. All right, let's continue our uh, letter reading. I took a little little break from uh, from recording just to kind of catch my breath, you know, catch my catch my train of thought, and to get some nice nice water nice ice water I always get um, in the reviews I always get the Starbucks ice water because it's, it's good it's good but some people make fun of it they think I just go there for the free water but I I'm kind enough to get another drink there too another uh, more caffeinated beverage our next letter hello there the reporter of the week hope your week has been lovely thus far I enjoyed the recent VORWSO as, as always and I'd like to say that I don't mind at all uh, just letting the viewer letters fuel the content of the show. As much as I do enjoy your blabbering, and honestly I do, I feel that you shouldn't have to force it, uh, and I'm one to understand about the pressure of keeping a schedule. Do what you gotta do. Uh, but it doesn't matter to me how often you post or how long the video is, as I feel your content is always of quality. I decided to write in this week after discovering an old toy of mine uh, that I had tucked away in a box in my childhood room. As someone who I've heard talk about the good old days, I felt you may find it interesting. I found my old Viewmaster uh, from the mid-90s, and I was wondering if you had one of these yourself, or perhaps remember them from your childhood. Some may consider it the original VR, uh, but I imagine it would seem quite archaic to a child in present-day time. Uh, I have a friend who's very much into the virtual reality scene, but it's not for me at all, uh, as I would not like to add any more deception to current reality. Uh, however, I remember watching or reaching for my Viewmaster quite often as a child. No electrical components, just plastic, a metal spring, a lens, and the most important aspect, the cardboard reels. I enjoyed viewing reptiles, birds, and others from the Animal Kingdom set. And there, was, there were Barbie still life shots and my favorite set from the Nickelodeon show Rugrats, among others that slid into the slot on top of the bright red uh, 3D view master. Uh, looking back, I think what I most enjoyed about this toy was the fact that I could enjoy it anywhere, even outdoors, uh, which is precisely what I've been doing lately with my shortwave radio. Uh, the weather recently has been such a delight here in rural Georgia. Anyhow, I'm quite often nostalgic, which leads me into a question I'd like to ask. Thinking of my favorite toys as a child, uh, my favorite of all uh, was that, which was not only a toy, but somewhat of a companion. I had a stuffed purple bunny rabbit, uh, which I carried with me absolutely everywhere. His name was Bubba. And I considered him my very best friend, and he still developed his own little persona over the years. I still have him today, uh, but his personality dwindled over the years uh, as I started growing into double digits. I still wonder sometimes what it would be like if I kept this character around, as I read something about people who create a tulpa a personality to act as a friend, but I suppose I'd rather not be stuck in my head as such. 
Uh, growing up, uh, did you have an imaginary friend, or perhaps uh, the toy that you brought around with everywhere? Anyway, I'd like to thank you for taking a trip down memory lane with me, and I'd like to wish you and your audience a wonderful week ahead. Sincerely, Heather. Well, thank you, Heather. Thank you for your uh, email. And uh, number one, the original, uh, the Viewmaster there, I never had one of them. I'm aware of them. Um, as a child, I was uh, very, very uh, simplistic when it came to means of entertainment, you know, I... Uh, I just needed, I mean, I really only needed just some toy soldiers and some toy cars, and I was set. I was good to go. I didn't need Lego bricks, or I didn't need any sort of TV or some video game or anything. You know, just some little toy soldiers, and I would set them up and let my imagination do the rest. Uh, and that's all that I really needed. And I never really had an imaginary friend. Um... I, I never did. I had, um... I, I, ne I, I never did. I just never did. I remember it being talked about, and I thought to myself one day as a little child, maybe I'd try to have one, but it never happened. Never, never worked. Um, nothing ever came of it. You know, I've, uh... I've read about people, uh... perhaps creating those, uh... those, those uh... Tul tulpas, uh, but I've never tested the validity of that uh, hypothesis, hypothesis that one of those could e exist, um, nor has it particularly interested me, but I still find the concept, you know, it's, it's something to read about every now and then. I think it's kind of, uh, it's neat, you know. Anyway, thank you for your letter. After that sip of water, Pull the chair back in, and let's see what else what else we got here. What is this? Okay, here we go. <coughs> Just checking, making sure. No, this one... No. That was a spam one. Here we go. Okay, here's that letter. Dear John, two weeks together, that's all it took. Kidding, kidding, that was from Dear John, a movie I actually haven't watched. Anyway, hello. I don't remember when or how I first discovered your wonderful channel, but it was, uh, I was last into it this past summer or fall, I just forgot for some reason. Something reminded me of your channel again a couple of months ago. Uh, I think at this time I'll stick around. Uh, you mentioned uh, DP slash DR in the VORW at some point, and I experienced it too, uh, connected to my anxiety. Once I was forced to give a uh, presentation in honors social studies in middle school, and what saved me that time was disconnecting from myself. <clears throat> All of a sudden, it was as if I was an observer hearing myself give a presentation. I'm not sure how I still stood up and gave my presentation while also being an observer watching, uh, who had no idea what she was going to say next, but I'm actually glad it happened because I really need an, needed an escape. Interjection, yeah, that's definitely it. 100%, yep. That's exactly what it's like, you're an observer. <coughs> Anyway, to continue, I've had times where it didn't feel like I was an observer in third person, but rather things around me didn't, uh, just didn't seem real, and that was very uncomfortable and just awful. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. It's connected to this thought that I had back when I had serious OCD problems, uh, that all I can do is not think about uh, that thought, because if I do, I'll deal real, uh, derealize again. Uh, forgetting about it seems to be the best solution for now. You said you've been stuck in it for weeks before, and I'm sorry that happened. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen again, or next time it does, something works to snap you out of it. I've also had bouts where I couldn't comprehend what was going on around me, and I just felt disoriented. Uh, and this has even happened while I was driving, and I almost had to pull over because it was basically like I couldn't see, um, but rather not being able to see literally. 
I just couldn't comprehend what I was seeing, you know, things felt, uh, and looked sort of hazy and, uh, and kind of similar to before, you know, when you're gonna faint, except I wasn't passing out. Have you ever experienced anything like that? And a more positive question, uh, what movies and or TV shows have you watched most recently, and can you rank them from favorite to least favorite? Well, thank you for your letter, and, uh, in indeed you have experienced it. Um, the first two, uh, I, you know, I, I've, I've gotten the same, but the last, um, I haven't gotten, I haven't really gotten that. I mean, only when, uh, when the blood pressure is low for me, you know, it's, sometimes I'll, you know, if I'm bending over to pick up something and I stand up real fast or, or, uh, or something to that extent, then I'll feel very, uh, dizzy sometimes and, uh, I'm not fully like I'm gonna black out, but, you know. Uh, thankfully, nothing, nothing like the uh, last one, but that sounds, sounds very scary, very scary. And, uh, to answer the question about the movies or television shows, um, that I've watched most recently, well, let's see. I'm not a big TV watcher, you know, when it comes to media consumption, it's either online uh, or it's on the radio, you know, I listen to radio programs, um, like yesterday, of course, I was listening to the, the VOA, the Voice of America, and, uh, they had a good, good program on about beads, about beads, the guy was talking about different beads for 30 minutes, and they even had callers about the beads, and, uh, they had guest speakers on talking about beads, and then the host kept cracking up and laughing, because he couldn't believe they were given a full-blown program about beads. That was interesting. That was... That was interesting. Um... When I do watch TV... Hmm, let's see. Wow. There's a lizard. Nice, giant lizard. A green lizard. <laughs> what a sight to see. It's like... It's like the Geico Gecko's half-cousin. Or something. Well, you be good now, okay? Don't do anything stupid. Do your thing, okay? Bask in the sun. Uh, anyway, the uh, television-wise, I don't watch a lot of television, but I've, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've managed to. Uh, let's see. Well, I've watched the show Cops. I always like that one. Sometimes you learn a thing or two about the law enforcement agencies. Not always, but sometimes. Um, so cops can be fun. Uh, the show Jail. <clears throat> that one. That one pretty much goes along with cops. The two of those shows, you know. And one show is the you know the police out on patrol. The others is really how they deal with people once they get arrested. And that's always both of those shows are an awful lot of fun. Um, to see, there's that. Um, what else? I mean, otherwise, I'll just scan around the TV channel. Sometimes the cooking shows I like. Um, sometimes those different types of cooking shows. Uh, Shark Tank. Shark Tank, a good, good business show. That's always a very fun one to watch. And... What else? We've got Shark Tank. Um, Undercover Boss can be good. Another good show there. And it all depends. I haven't watched a lot of TV lately, so I can't really rank anything, but those are some uh, shows that I'll enjoy watching. Thank you very much for your letter. Thank you for writing in. All right, and our final letter. Hello, review bro. I've been a subscriber for about a year now, and unlike a a uh, portion of your viewers. I'd not gotten here from Reddit or any cringe compilations. I was actually drawn to you while watching a video from Damn Drops, a fellow food reviewer, while I was eating Five Guys, and I managed to uh, find myself at your channel uh, through a couple suggested videos. And surprisingly, I wasn't really put off or had a snicker at the suits. I genuinely found your content in interesting, especially the Average Day and Idle Mind videos uh, when I first started watching. I think it was because I remember having a classmate in my high school in a similar situation 
where he would wear a suit and tie or just anything uh, too formal for a public school setting every day. And I made fun of him behind closed doors at first, but I soon realized that he does this all the time, and it's just his thing that he does, and he has the ambition and balls to do it every day, uh, and it's really admirable when I consider any sort of bullying or remarks he probably endured throughout high school and still did his thing. Also, between you and me, I went through a fedora phase in middle school, and uh, I don't think to uh, look down on people for it, uh, knowing I had done similar. But that said, I had the ability and the expendable income. If I had the ability and the expendable income to wear a suit more often, I would certainly take it. I just hope you know I'm cheering for you, buddy. Sentiments aside, I have a few questions for you, of course. Uh, I was wondering if you'd consider reviewing 7-Eleven's pizza or any other items from 7-Eleven, such as their wings or mini tacos. I happen to live right next to a 7-Eleven, and I tend to get their pizza almost once every one to two weeks. It's not too bad, and it's about the only 5 uh, 55 for a whole pie, so it's, it's a frequent purchase of mine. And I'd love to know what you think of it. I wouldn't know about their wings, but I know that you are a bit of a, a Wings fan yourself, so it's a suggestion. Response? Um, I haven't been to a 7-Eleven really in a long time, um, but it's definitely something that I think about every now and then, and, you know, maybe it's something that I will end up trying out there. Uh, their pizza especially, you know, people sometimes talk about 7-Eleven pizza, and, and they'll say that it's good, you know? when I when I look at 7-Eleven, I'll oftentimes, even myself, be under the impression that, you know, 7-Eleven, it's just, you know, it's on the same level as, uh, any sort of convenience store that you see, you know, attached to a gas station or whatnot, but I've, I've heard it's good. So, I mean, I've never had their pizza, I can't attest to uh, whether I think it's good or not, um, but, you know, it sounds interesting something I've heard of for a while, and it's something I might try out at some point. Question 2. In a lot of your videos, you say that you're not one to give 10 out of 10s, but in your uh, Red Baron Super Slice video, you gave a 10 out of 10. As uh, so that was years ago, do you still consider it to be a 10 out of 10, or will you revisit, uh, or uh, perhaps retry it, uh, you know, in a, a later VORW, kind of like the uh, Spar review? Response? Well, an interesting thing about the rating scale that I usually don't talk about much, but it's an interesting thing nonetheless. In the early days of the rating scale, um, specifically, you know, until 2013, my rating scale was uh, very generalized. I, I didn't have any sort of system to it, you know. Now I, I have a system to the rating scale. I've had that system for a while. Um, but in the early days, I didn't really have any sort of process that I would go through in terms of the rating scale, you know. If I liked something, I gave it a 10. And if I wasn't a big fan of it, I'd throw out some random number, and that was that. So, there goes the cat. Where are you? Where are you going? You see another, you see another kitten? No, you just on the move. Fair enough. Anyway. What do you see? See squirrel? Ah, uh, you see something. That's so bad. The, uh... Anyway. I would just throw out a random number. I didn't really pay any attention to the rating scale. I mean, most of the time I didn't even give any sort of numerical critique. Um, on a product until 2013 when one of the best uh, known quotes from that pan pizza review was saying I'll give this an 8 out of 10 just because I don't give 10 out of 10s and I originally had said that statement um, just making fun of uh, fun of the people who are very uh, you know very uh, uptight about you know critiquing things um, but people then got on my case so much about um, the, the rating system, I figured, well, I'm going to incorporate a rating scale regularly into my videos. And then as time went on, I started dwelling on the quote about not giving the 10 out of 10s, and I thought to myself, you know, I know I made fun of it, but that's actually pretty good. And I thought, you know, 
I'm not going to give 10 out of 10s. It's, uh... I don't know. I guess the best way to put it is it's just very hard to re to attain, a very hard if not impossible, to, t to attain absolute perfection um, in terms of a, a food product. So, I adopted that, and now for the last three years or so, and that's how I've been, uh, that's how I've been doing it, you know, it's, and it's been going, going good, you know, yeah, that's that, what I have there now. Will I ever revisit that? Maybe. Um, I can't guarantee it. I, I know that Red Baron, what is that, the Red Baron Super Slice? Except that's what it is, it's a discontinued product, I think, so I can't really re revisit it, um, anymore. Uh, but to my knowledge, it was a good product. It was something I enjoyed very much at the time. It was a staple of my diet for a while. You know, so I, it would probably be in the nines nowadays. It was enjoyable. I liked it. You know. Uh, you have, I think, two more questions? Three? Uh, yes. I've not heard a lot of hip-hop in your shortwave broadcasts. Uh, do you eliminate any suggestion with excessive vulgarity or swearing um, that a lot of rap songs tend to have, or are you just not a fan? I have a couple suggestions for the shortwave broadcasts that are relatively clean, but I just wanted to ask what's your stance on hip-hop um, for the shortwave broadcast and your opinions on it in general. Well, thank you. Um, in terms of hip-hop, I'm not against playing hip hop or rap, but it needs to be um, needs to be clean. You know, that's all. It needs to be clean, just because even though the uh, FCC doesn't monitor, you know, shortwave transmissions that much at all, uh, I still like to be within, you know, the, the regulations in terms of uh, swearing or lack thereof on the radio, um, and also just for the the you know the professionalism of the broadcast. So I don't. Um, I don't really, I try to limit any sort of vulgarity in the songs, but say there's a song that you really want to hear played, but it has, you know, a radio um, edited or a censored version or whatever, uh, you can just send me that, and, uh, you know, that's perfectly, perfectly fine, I, uh, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, if you were to send a song that had one, one bad word in it, I could, uh, still play it, you know, no one's gonna throw a fit or anything. Um, over it. I mean, to be honest, I've heard the Voice of America, you know, our own government's shortwave station, uh, they have a music program that they play, and sure enough, I heard they're playing some song, you know, F this, F that, you know, they're not even, sw you know, not even censored out or anything, they were just letting it all go, and that was a, that was a full-blown government-funded broadcast, too, you know, run by the, the U.S. government, so who knows, but... I like to be better safe than sorry. Um, so that's where that stands. If you are interested in uh, sending me a music request, if you haven't already, you can email me at uh, vorwinfo at gmail.com. And uh, the only thing that would be helpful is if you just let me know how you listen to the broadcast. Uh, you can just let me know if you're tuned in uh, on SoundCloud, if you listen um, on the TuneIn radio, TuneIn app. Um, listen on the MP3 stream, or if you listen on a online receiver, or even if you have your own shortwave radio that you listen on. Um, but you can submit as many requests as you want, and otherwise just uh, let me know how you listen. And uh, oh, what else do we have? If if you are, um, or one thing that you should just be aware of with the music requests on the VORW shortwave program. Um, some, some people, very few, but some will request a song the same hour that the broadcast is played and, uh, you know, want it to get played then, but please understand that there's a, a good size backlog of requests, so give, give it, you know, one to three weeks and you'll hear it, you'll end up hearing it no matter what, um, but sometimes it can take a little while and, um, I hope you'll understand. So that's what I got there. And then finally, or actually last second to last, penultimately. 
Are you an enthusiast of any other uh, niche musical hobbies other than shortwave, such as vinyl, cassettes, etc.? Or have you considered getting into such? I collect cassette tapes uh, of anything from black metal uh, to underground rap, uh, and have, have well over a hundred, as well as a couple of cassette decks and Walkmans. I, uh, I've wanted to get into some con cassettes, but not really for uh, music. I just have a, uh, I have a cassette, uh, a cassette recorder uh, with a few cassette tapes. Um, I still have that up in uh, up in New York, and I want to get my hands on it at some point. Put make good use of it. And finally, can you shout out the following people? Yeah, uh, Tiberius Farnham, Sean Davis, Samantha Garcia, Mathis Hagdorn, Luna Dakak. And Magnus Hansen, uh, he says, oh, one more name, uh, Joseph Peretta, and uh, Manav Kohli. Uh, yep, and uh, that's about all peace out. Yep, and all, all of you individuals, the whole, the whole crew, the whole team, got shout out, shouted out there. And if there was some subliminal message in that, you got me, but all is well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, let's check, see if there's any other last letters out there, and if not, uh, we'll essentially wrap up the program, so give me a minute. Okay, we've got a few last letters here. Dear John, it's great to see that you're doing so well. Uh, it's wonderful to see that you've expanded your shortwave radio broadcasts, which uh, I've been enjoying thoroughly uh, for every week for the past two months. I realize that I haven't written in for quite a while, uh, however, I have been keeping up regularly with your YouTube channel as well, and it's amazing. After six years, you've achieved what many people can only dream of, and I'm sure that me and many of your fans are very proud of your success. It's scary to think where you'll be in another six years, but who knows, only the future can tell. I have a fashion question for you, and I was wondering if you can help me out. I'm currently a 24-year-old man, and I've been balding ever since I was 18. At first it didn't really show, but over the past couple of years it's become more noticeable. I was wondering if you have had any hair tips for balding men. Uh, I was thinking of either going with a buzz cut or eventually just taking a razor and shaving it all off. Uh, but what do you think would be the most formal yet stylish way to handle this situation? As always, I wish you the best, and I look forward to hearing more of your shortwave broadcasts. In my next reception report, I'll try and record some footage of your show, your fan Vasily. So thank you. Uh, Vasilis. Um, do remember that in the uh, UK, uh, you can catch the shortwave broadcast nowadays at uh, 8 p.m. GMT. Uh, that's 20 hours UTC. You can, um, if there's any sort of time change, I think it will remain at 20 hours UTC. And uh, the frequency now is 11580 kilohertz. You know, 11580. Same time as, I guess, the afternoon broadcast that was on the channel 292, but 11580 kilohertz is the frequency for you. To answer your question there, I... Well... I'm a... What are you meowing at? Thanks for telling me. Um, I'm... I'm not the standard when it comes to what I would do if I was losing my hair. Some people will try and do the comb over, they'll desperately try and hide it. What I would do if I was really starting to significantly bald or recede, is I would, main my, I would maintain my exact same hairstyle. I would continue to really part it and uh, slick it back, and if it just starts becoming really noticeable, i just keep doing this entire hairstyle um, just as per usual until there's nothing left to comb. And that's what I would do, you know, I wouldn't um, do anything else. If it got gray really early and balded at the same time, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't dye it. I wouldn't try and comb it a certain way. That's just what I would do. I would just let it do its thing. Um, I'm, I'm different that way. But when it comes to doing what you can, um, if that's not the approach, and it's, I doubt it's one that many people would take, but I would recommend probably at first getting a buzz cut 
um, because you can maintain a buzz cut uh, while still having some formality and if you really don't like it and believe me I know some communities online make fun of hats but the average person that you'll see day to day does not care one single bit and uh, you know won't won't think twice um, if anything they'll think it looks all right you know um, is if you're really not satisfied with how the buzz cut looks you can always you know wear some sort of hat anything of your choice if you want to just go with like a some sort of a flat cap some sort of you know beret if you really want to go for a traditional fedora or anything of your choice go for it again no one's really gonna care or criticize um, and also a buzz cut instead of shaving uh, allows you to get the hair to grow a little faster if you want to go back to trying to get it to work getting you know something to work with um, but I would recommend that instead of completely shaving it all off you know so that's my advice uh, for the moment and I wish you the best of luck what else do we have here hello again John thank you for playing my music request during the last shortwave show some great music picks uh, from others as well it's always nice to hear all the requests a bit of your thoughts too I've been listening to the VORW YouTube podcast for the last month or so, uh, and although I enjoy all of your content, including the food reviews and the shortwave broadcasts, the podcast is my personal favorite. I used to listen to it while playing Battlefield 1 or Rocket League, uh, or late at night before going to sleep. Some content creators seem to feel the need to make their content kind of manic uh, and overwrought to fit it with what they perceive as the YouTube norm, but I appreciate you for being yourself. It's refreshing. I have some suggestions for discussion topics, um, if you don't have any to discuss. I do ever get recognized at fast food restaurants, either by the staff or the customers. I'll actually, uh, I'll answer that one um, right now, and then I'll save the other two for, uh, for later. Um, I sometimes get recognized, but it's actually surprisingly a, a rare uh, occasion. It's, it's rarer than you think. I'll you get recognized um, sometimes pretty often there was one time pretty recently where I was at the uh, at the supermarket and I was on the checkout line and the guy behind me on the line uh, at the the supermarket as I'm checking out asks me uh, hey ex excuse me are you uh, are you review bra and I say yeah I am and then the uh, the the guy manning the cash register the uh, cashier at the supermarket pitches in and he said oh my god that's who I thought you were and it was just an interesting coincidence that both of these people had you know no association with each other the the cashier and uh, the other guy behind me online both both recognized me and uh, I thought that was an interesting little experience that was pretty pretty recently uh, that that happened um, but otherwise Otherwise, I haven't had too many um, people recognize me at these fast food places. Sometimes it'll happen, you know. There was one time at some pizza place, the uh, guy working there wanted a, a selfie with me. And, uh, but, you know, you don't get it too much. Um, maybe sometimes some people might recognize me, but they won't say anything, or uh, they won't be 100% sure that it's me. Or who knows why, but sometimes it happens, and it's always an interesting experience when it does, but I'm always happy to, you know, to converse a little bit, as long as, as long as you, you know, initiate things kindly, I'll respond kindly, you know. Uh, your other two suggestions were, uh, Although you're reviewing new items, are there any personal favorites or staples of yours that you find yourself going back to? It's a good one. And do you have any favorite films? Uh, I'm a filmmaker myself, so it's always something uh, that's interesting to hear from, from people. Well, thank you for the suggestions there. I'll definitely consider them, and I'll probably talk about them in the next show. Uh, to conclude, even though I don't have a particularly strong interest in men's formal wear, I still enjoyed the talk you gave at the beginning of the last podcast in response to the topic of cufflinks. I also found it 
fascinating to hear about uh, you're getting the shortwave show transmitted all the way to Japan and that people there caught it randomly and wrote in. Very cool. Anyway, enjoyed both shows. Keep up the good work. Uh, best wishes from Andrew. Andrew, thank you. Thank you for writing, Andrew, and it's great to hear from you. And hope you're still enjoying the shortwave programs if you listen. Greetings, dear lecturer. Haven't written in for a while, uh, so I just wanted to say hi and ask you how you feel about cravats. Well, I think... I mean, when it comes to it, there's really two different types. Um, usually the ones in the real formal, um, formal wear, if they're worn, say, with morning dress, um, with a wing collar shirt and, you know, a vest and a full, uh, morning coat. Those are okay. I, I'd still prefer to wear a necktie, but, you know, in that situation, um, cravat's fine. Of course, some people will also consider an ascot, you know, that type of tie. You can sometimes see, you know, some, a bon vivant wearing... Uh, you know, with, uh, you know, tucked under his, uh, under his shirt with a sport coat and whatnot. Um, that's not a look that I favor, but if you still want to go with that, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. Um, but I prefer the, the first, uh, more traditional, formal, uh, alternative when it comes to cravats. But I always let people have their own personal say in what they want to wear. Uh, secondly, the letter continues... I wanted to ask uh, what you think of poetry, and if you're into it, into it, do you prefer rhymed or unrhymed poetry? One of my favorite poems is The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock uh, by T.S. Eliot. As always, your show is my favorite thing on YouTube. Keep doing your thing. You seem like a stellar person from Chelsea. Well, thank you very much for your letter. And when it comes to poetry, I think it's uh, it's something that I should should read more of. Um, but I like it. You know, I like it. Um, I don't really have any real particulars regarding it. Uh, rhymed poetry, in my opinion, always has the easiest flow when you're reading it. Uh, because oftentimes when one visualizes poetry initially, that's what comes to mind. And it always helps it flow easiest. But sometimes unrhymed poetry is able to convey the message or story uh, more clearly, you know. And that's my view there. But I think both are just fine. Um, I enjoy both, and uh, I think, you know, a lot of the, the, the great poets um, can, you know, either do rhymed or unrhymed and just make it into something incredible and, and beautiful to read. Thank you very much for your letter. And our last letter here, uh, Hello Review Bra, sent you an email a few weeks ago but didn't make it on the VORW show, that's okay. I'll try and keep this one short and simple. My question to you is what kind of water do you usually drink with your food reviews? Is it spring water, tap water, great value? And uh, furthermore, I'd like to ask you to review McDonald's Big Tasty Burger, if it's available in the U.S. Easy, my favorite burger on the market, although I haven't decided whether it's better with or without bacon yet. Thanks for reading, and I hope you have a great day. Yosef from London. Well, thank you very much. What kind of water do I drink? Well, usually it's Starbucks water. Uh, whatever that is, it can be, uh, it can be, uh, maybe it's a Starbucks tap water, but whatever it is, it's good. Uh, I like it. it, it actually tastes good, and, uh, it's one of my favorite waters from any sort of, uh, establishment. Otherwise, I'll drink, uh, Zephyr Hills water, uh, that's from a part of, uh, Florida here, uh, called Zephyr Hills. And, uh, that's good too. It's good, uh, good bottled or uh, jug water. 
and uh, that's that's good too good type of water so it's either that or the uh, Starbucks water that is usually what I drink and that's what's in the thirst buster too and what's in the blue chalice and the uh, big tasty burger I hate to say it but I think that might just be uh, a UK or a Europe um, burger because I've I mean, maybe it's a hidden menu item over here, but I haven't heard of it, unfortunately. I and mean, I haven't, uh, haven't heard of it, so I hate to say that, but I haven't uh, been able to try that one as of late. But who knows, maybe, maybe it's lurking somewhere. Who's to say, right? Anyway, let's check the, uh, the dead YouTube inbox. And let's see if there's anything, anything here. Let's see. Let's see. No. No, no. Nothing here. And... Nothing here. Let's see. Nothing here. Nothing here. Help a young brother out want to be an app developer of your vids by the way and then he linked me to his uh, go fund me sorry I don't have any money to donate to I don't have any any money on my own to even pay for this radio show I'm sorry if I had, if I won the lottery, if I had millions to throw around, I'd, I'd throw a grand your way. Let you be an app developer, but I, don't, I can't even take care of myself. There, are, let's see. There might be a couple letters here in the uh, in this folder. Let's see. No, really nothing even... Nothing here. Boy, the YouTube inbox is dead. I didn't even... I didn't even mention it uh, this time around, and it's... There's almost... In all the week's worth of messages, there's nothing really at all for the VORW show at all. And I think that's for the best. We'll just let it die. And uh, just let it convert over to uh, to email. You know? Let's see. I can't find anything. I swear I had a few emails uh, that I'd gotten in the past two weeks that were for the VRW show, but now I'm looking and I can't find them anywhere, and I think this is a problem with the YouTube bin box and why it's good to kind of abandon it and start uh, utilizing email from now on, um, because email doesn't really have that problem, you know? It's much easier to find, whereas with the YouTube thing, I'll search, and I'll search, and something I thought that was there, you don't see it anymore, you gotta refresh the page, and then it shows up, and then something else disappears, it's a very, very flawed flawed system the YouTube inbox is so I'm sorry if you sent me an email via the YouTube uh, inbox and it didn't get read um, and there was also a uh, there was also a uh, an issue that if I tried to reply to messages on YouTube some of the replies never got sent out either so please if you want 
a reply from me or something, please send me an email. Uh, the YouTube inbox is essentially broken. It's very inefficient, and uh, if I didn't get to your letter, I know I can't guarantee that it'll get read anyways, but if you want to put in a good uh, good chance of that straw getting picked, you know, theoretically, um, please send me an email. You can email it to repweekinterview1 at gmail.com, or you can still try and keep the inbox alive and, and uh, go for it if you see it fit, you know. If you see it fit. I'm sorry if I didn't read any other letters. I I apologize. Um, but again, keep those fingers crossed and stay hopeful for the next one, right? Well, and that being said, that pretty much wraps things up. Let's make sure we are still recording. Yeah, we are. I don't know. What do you think? Is it uh, is it time for analytics? Time for the fun, fun-filled analytics. Guess so. What was last show? 142, right? 142. Here we go. All right, let's look. Let's look. What do we got? By one minute, 34 seconds, was down to 84% down to 23% at 10 minutes uh, at 21% at 32 minutes at 21% at an hour and 16 minutes uh, that's good hey the same percentage of people made it to an hour and 16 that's that's good looks good um, 16 by an hour of 58 and 12 by 2 hours and 34 minutes so hey lucky lucky 12% right 12% um, the countries with the highest view duration this time around were uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands. I wonder if it was an actual um, islander, an island resident, or if it was a vacationer there uh, that watched the, uh, the whole thing. But they, they watched it in full, 2.36.13. That's good. Good on you, Turks and Caicos. Bolivia followed it up, 2.11.23. Average duration. And Thailand at 201.36. That's good. Um, Thailand. Thailand. They were actually in the news pretty recently. With the BBC shortwave relay station that was essentially... Uh, that was closed down due to contractual issues. Um, though the, the, the media... I'm not going to call it any sort of fake news, but it was incorrectly reported. Uh, in so much that... They made it seem as though most of these transmissions from this shortwave station, um, this shortwave relay station that the BBC owned that got shut down in Thailand, uh, were now gone forever and that shortwave was dead. Um, but that was just false reporting. Um, rather, the BBC flawlessly switched all the relays over to their other relay stations in Singapore, in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Armenia. Um, the UAE uh, and in Oman as well so they just simply switched the relays to different stations there wasn't any big loss like they portrayed it it was just some contractual issues I know but that was that anyway uh, let's see the countries of the lowest view duration now let's see San Marino. That was a. Uh, that's a very small little, um, small little city, city state um, in Europe. That's interesting. With uh, one second. Bangladesh, uh, with two seconds. Cote d'Ivoire. Someone over there was listening. Uh, six seconds. Uh, Macau, uh, seven seconds, and uh, Kyrgyzstan. Algeria, uh, listening for eight seconds. So, I wonder if I, I wonder if there's any shortwave listeners in those parts of the world that tune in. I mean, I know Bangladesh. Some people wrote into that one broadcast; they were listening. That's what I wonder. You know, I've mapped out all the countries that the VORW shortwave program is heard in, but don't you think North Africa, nothing, 
all all blank, you know, Algeria, Libya, Morocco, Tunisia, uh, Egypt, nothing, completely, you know, completely blank, no correspondence ever received from those countries, even though shortwave listenership is high, and I mean, I think these broadcasts to Europe, even when I use the channel 292, you know, I think that was heard over there. I mean, I was I was able to hear it on a receiver over in the uh, Canary Islands, so I think it must have passed through North Africa. And the broadcast from WRMI targeting Europe there definitely hits North Africa good. And West Africa, too. So, I mean, I think... There's got, I think there's some listeners there. I just don't think the internet's there in some parts, you know, where they still listen to shortwave. I bet there's some people in North Africa and Algeria and whatnot that just scan around on their shortwave sets and might have heard VORW at some point and either weren't interested or they might listen every week and they don't have any way of contacting me. Who knows? That's why I always ask for... I always ask about emailing in um, if you're listening because... I don't know that you're out there unless you let me know that you are. That's how it works. There's no email or there's no analytics system for radio like like it is here. So that's why I always, if you listen to the program, that's why I ask about emailing and that's why it's so important um, because I don't know that you're out there listening unless you email me that you are, you know? But anyway, that's that. Speaking of emails, you can email me with uh, any letters for the next show. RepWeekInterview1 at gmail.com. That's R-E-P-W-E-E-K-I-N-T-E-R-V-I-E-W-1 at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all that I have for you. Have a very happy spring and a uh, happy final week of March. And remember, if you are interested in tuning in on the shortwave, please check out that paste bin file. And remember the frequencies to Western North America, East Asia, 5850, to Europe, 11580, and to North America, 7490. Hope it can catch you on the short waves, and if not, enjoy the food reviews, and until then, we'll see you here on YouTube with the next YouTube VORW. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. Take care. VORW number 143 concluded.